Romans chapter 10, we're going to look at verses 9 through 17. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 17. The title message is, The Faith That Saves, The Faith That Saves, The Faith That Saves. We had one more. The faith that saves you from hell. I think we always need to hear that word here and there. The faith that saves you from hell. The faith that saves you from hell. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Amen. Amen. The faith that saves you from hell. Too many people think that they have right faith. And I mean, I was in the same boat, you know, before I came to the knowledge of truth, before I came to know the King James Bible. You know, I always thought I have faith. You know, I was a quote unquote hardworking Christian at a you know, praise and worship church. You know, we only did nothing but praise and worship. Literally, there were no Bible study. Yeah. I mean, only Bible study that they ever provided was, uh, you know, each Sunday after praise and worship, you know, just do sinner's prayer. You know, like they do praise and worship for like an hour plus, do uh, some Bible study. You know, maybe it's Moses, you know, maybe David. You know, something that everyone's very familiar with. Never taught the real doctrine of the Word of God. But, you know, just because everybody says, you know, Jesus saves, so they do it. And not knowing the real faith, you know, I just thought I had, you know, some kind of good faith, you know. Even though I can't really sing, they made me the, you know, leader of the worship team. You know, I sang. I, you know, so I'm not really shy about sitting in front of people you know, singing, you know, because you know, I've done it even though I can't sing. But besides that, you know, one thing is that I always thought I had, you know, good faith, but I met Pastor Senior Kim, and then, you know, he was teaching me the Word of God, and I realized, especially when it came to the differences in the Word of God, I realized I really had nothing. My faith was zero. Because the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, we just saw it. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I never really heard the word of God, right? This one, it's not just hearing. You're actually hearing to learn, understand, you know, actually grow in the faith. Many of the brethren here, and many of the people who's listening, I know you could empathize with me. I know you could agree 
that you went to many of the I mean, secular churches out there. You might have came from even you know, cults out there. And you never grew in the word of God. You went to church. You did your best. You thought you were doing your best for the Lord. But at the end of the day, you weren't doing best for the Lord. You are very sincerely wrong. Just like many of the, you know, calls out there, passing out their literature, you know, praying five times a day and doing all that stuff. You know, some of them are sincerely wrong. However, if you seek the truth, Lord will always send it your way. You know, that's why no one can ever give excuse, you know, at the judgment. That's why what you have, what I have right now, is the most precious thing. And you and I have to understand that more and more. And especially if your faith has stalled, right? That means that you haven't really gotten into the Word of God. Simple as that. You could pray 24-7, but it's just like, you know, drinking only liquid to grow. But you need substance. You need meat, right? You need protein. You know, you need other nutrients. That's why as a Christian... Many people are very unbalanced. Either you're really studying a lot of Bible, but you pray less. You pray a lot, but you don't study the Bible. Or neither. The majority of the people don't study and don't pray. But that's why you and I have to understand the faith that saved you and me from hell. It's not the faith that so many people are preaching out there. One of the things is that, you know, the steps that we see is that, you know, as a sinner, in order to get saved, you hear the word, right? Faith is not going to come from seeing Jesus Christ in your dreams. It's not, right? So, number one thing is that faith right now does not come from experience. That's it. It's not. And let's go to, let's look at a few of the verses that we're very familiar with and people do not like to see, especially if you are of the charismatic, if you like signs and tongues. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 is a very important chapter. It kicks a lot of the charismatics out there. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. But we're going to look at verse 14. We'll start with verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Man, we have so many false teachers out there this day and age. You just turn on any app, go to YouTube, you know, go TikTok, go anywhere. You have false preachers everywhere. They say they represent Jesus Christ. But all they talk about is the feelings. All they talk about is experience. All they talk about is, I saw Jesus last night. I saw Jesus in the cloud, right? He rained overnight, and I saw Jesus in the puddle, right? And then beyond that, they say, I see Mary, you know? You know? I see Moses. I see Elijah. You know, they, they say they send out every single name out there. Why? Because of verse 14. And no marvel... For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You know, he shows up in people's dreams. He shows up in people's visions. That's how he confuses people. That's why it's very critical. A sinner has to hear the word. And based on the word of God, you get saved. It's not about hearing the devil pretending to be Jesus Christ. It's not about seeing Jesus Christ in your dreams. No, only through the word of God, incorruptible word of God. Let's continue, verse 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. You just, sometimes, you know, best politicians are false preachers out there. I mean, they have the same characteristic. All they do is smile. And they smile, and they always say, good for you, brother, good for you, sister. And on the pulpit, they only preach good things. 
they're, they concentrate on Abraham a lot. Abraham and the blessing, prosperity, right? You know, <clears throat> if you're poor, you're going to get rich. If you're sick, you're going to get healed, right? Yeah. If you're unmarried, you're going to get married, right? If you have a bad job, you're going to get a better job. Yes. You know, they just continue to preach that. Yeah. Look at verse 15. Why? Because these workers of the devil are transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Yeah. You and I have to understand that we're in a spiritual battle, yes. and by by the grace of God, we somehow found the truth. Amen. And we have to keep the truth. Yeah. And we have to fight for the truth. Yes. And you have to let others know about this truth. Yes. The faith that saved you and me from hell, you can't just keep it on your own as Christians. That's, right. That's being very selfish. Right. You know? You, I know that every single one of us have family members or cousins or very close friends who aren't saved. You can't keep it to yourself. If you tried once, you got to try again. If you tried twice, you got to try thrice. You got to continue to try. But you have to pray. You can't do it out of the flesh. You know, many times, the faith that saves that we know, Christians, especially newer Christians, whose knowledge is puffed up now because you found out about King James Bible, you start learning these doctrines that you learn from, you know, Dr. Ruckman and through the other preachers, you think you know everything. But you have to always put yourself in other person's shoes. You have to put yourself there. Do you think if you start talking about, you know, Adam, Eve, the serpent, different type of blood, you know, everything all at once, you think they're going to be able to handle it? No, they think you're crazy. You got to go little by little, right? That's why if you know of a person who's not saved, you got to hit the salvation. Yeah. Number one, salvation. Amen. You know, tribulation, great, great topic, right? That's not going to save them, right? Talking about Old Testament, all this dispensationalism, great. It's not going to save them. You got to talk to them about hell. You got to talk to them about their own soul burning in hell. You got to talk to them about salvation. You got to talk about the right faith. Sometimes, Christians, especially Bible-believing Christians, since you and I know some of the deepest doctrines out there compared to fundamentalists out there, we just get gung-ho about the wrong reasons. Always remember who you're dealing with. Always remember you were one time that person who didn't have that faith. You were lost. I was lost. I was astray out in the world. And they're like that too. You know, one of the best characteristics and one of the best advice I got was that you have to have compassion. Yes. No matter what, you have to have compassion, right? Yes, In order for you to really, truly tell others about this faith that saves people from hell, you have to have compassion. Do you really care about them? Do you really care about their soul, right? Do you care about their beings? You know, a lot of people like Oral Roberts, Jimmy Swagger, they care about people's belly. They care about the mighty dollars. You know, when we saw Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 17, every single Bible-believing person, every single Christian should be able to give a testimony of their salvation. Yeah, why? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, that God, has saved from the, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Every single Christian should be able to give a testimony of your salvation. If you can't, you're in the same boat as Oral Roberts and Jimmy Swagger. Whether you like it or not, those charismatics out there, they're always about feelings. How dare you ask me about my salvation? I have to. You know, Bible says you have to preach the word in season, out of season. You and I are not ashamed of gospel of Jesus Christ. Every single one of us are true, not the JWs out there. We're true witness for Jesus Christ. And you have to ask that question. You know, when we're doing out there preaching, street preaching, you know, when we're doing visitation, 
the most cringeworthy thing that I, the answer that I receive is always, you know, you ask him, you know, are you safe? Do you know for sure where you go, you know, if you were to die tonight? You know, they're like, I don't need it. You know, I'm a Christian. Okay. <laughs> That's not the question that I really ask, right? You know? But how are you saved? I'm a Christian. I'm a pastor's kid. Good, okay? That, that, that doesn't say anything. You know, I'm a pastor, you know? I mean, I give money to the church. I do charity. I've been going to church all my life. Okay, so thanks for your background story. So how are you saved? If any person in this room cannot give a salvation testimony, you have to check your salvation. Some people are married here. You remember the day you got married. Sure. I guarantee you do, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, unless you had a car accident and you lost your memory, right? But I don't think any person is like that. You remember the day you got married, Absolutely. right? You remember those days. If you've gotten saved, how can you not remember that day? Right. Whether you're young or old. Right. You might not know the exact time, but you should know when, right. right? Maybe, you know, I was in high school. You know, I went to a summer camp. You know, I got saved. You know, like that kind of testimony by trusting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Many times that, you know, people that I've talked to throughout the years who can't give a clear testimony are the folks that who trust in their experience. Because they're not even sure 100%. Right? Think about it. One day, I was going through a truly hardship in my life. And I was going through cancer. And this person was like, oh yeah, at the hospital bed, I was facing death. But suddenly, a doctor came in and says, you're cancer-free. And then you're praying, and then you see this vision, like angels talking to you. And behind him, greater voice telling you, you know, I saved you. Now, those are testimony of many of the folks. Yes. Many people have that type of testimony where they think that God specifically, in a special way, saved them from certain death. So they think that they're saved. Are their salvation based on the word of God? No. It's not. No. It's based on their experience, right. near-death experience. And that's one of the biggest, you know, trick that devil uses. Yeah. Unless your salvation is based on the word of God, you have to check it. Amen. You have to. Because Bible says this is the final authority. That's right. Sure, word of prophecy is better than anything out there. Yes. It's a perfect proof. <laughs> and you cannot give a salvation testimony based on the word of God. Then you have to check your salvation. You know, I'm not here to demean you in any way. But it's a wake-up call for many people. Because a lot of people accept Christ. A lot. Every time you turn on TV, someone's leading someone in a sinner's prayer. You know, there's like a bunch of crusades out there. They do praise and worship for two hours. Everybody, they're like, you know, in a rock and roll, like those contemporary music stage. And their flesh is really, really, you know, emotional. And they're saying, come on down. Accept Christ. People don't even know what they're doing. And then they're like, okay. And then they go on their day. Next day, they commit a lot of sin. And they're like, oh, am I really saved? They have no assurance or anything. Because they didn't know they were sinner on their way to hell. They didn't know that the blood of Jesus Christ washes all, way, all their sins away. They didn't know that they had to have a repenting heart, turn from their ways to turn to the Lord, and accept him as their Lord and Savior. Instead, they were just flashily really excited. And then they pray, and they think, okay, I might be okay. And they never have assurance of salvation. Here are the common steps. I mean, this is the real step 
to get saved. You have to first hear the word of God as a sinner. And then you have to believe the gospel. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, that Jesus died for you, Thank you right? Thank you, he, buried, he was buried and rose again. Yes. You believe the gospel. And then you trust him as your Lord and Savior, as we saw, according to Romans chapter 10, 9, 10, 13. And then upon accepting him out of your own will, then you get saved. You get into the body of Jesus Christ. You're part of the family of God now. And you've gone through spiritual circumcision. God circumcises you. Amen. Think about it. Yeah. You know, if you know the meaning of circumcision, it's separation forever. Right? Yeah. So when you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, God says, I'm going to circumcise you from your flesh and your soul. Knowing this, we know that we're going to heaven. Yeah. That's a clear-cut doctrine that you don't really hear anywhere else. That's, right. That's why people don't know where they're going after they die. Yeah. That spiritual circumcision itself alone should give anybody assurance of salvation. Yeah. That's why if you were to ever talk to someone and they start right away talking about, yeah, you know, I was going through this real sickness, you know, you know, alarm bell, yep. right? You know, I was like walking down the street and suddenly I heard flowers talking to me, you know? So I, oh my, in my dreams, you know, man, those rocks were talking to me, right? Oh, I, I feel like the clouds were saying something to me, right? I mean, sometimes cloud might look like Mary, but to me, it just looks like clouds a lot of times, right? Sometimes it looks like hamburger, you know? But what does that mean? I'm just hungry, you know? So you have to understand. And as Christians, this should give you and I the 100% assurance. You should never doubt. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. You and I, if you knew that you were a sinner on your way to hell, and that you trusted Christ and him alone as your Lord and Savior to save you from hell, you should never, never, ever worry about burning in hell. Amen. Even if you wanted to go, you can't go. Hey, praise the Lord. I mean, that's always the you know, most amusing part when we're street preaching out there. People get angry looking at your signs. You know? it, it has the pictures, you know, drawings from you know, Dr. Ruckman, you know, people being sent down to hell. We have many of Bible verses and they get angry, and they say, I'm not going to hell, you're going to hell. I'm not, I can't. I'm sorry, sir, ma'am, I can't. And even if I wanted to, because I'm saved once and for all. You know, even if I wanted to. I mean, that's a great, great, you know, blessing from the Lord. Greatest. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Amen. Yes. That's it. When you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior, your body and soul separated once and for all. Yes. Our body will continue to sin, brethren. Yes. Don't be mistaken. Right. Like someone were asking, you know, Apostle Paul, then can I do anything I want? Everything I want? Can I just live a sinful life? He said, God forbid. Right? right? Because you're saved, you got to do more now. You know? It's not going to be condition of your salvation, but because you're a saved child, because how grateful you are, how thankful you are, you want to live your life for the Lord. You know, just like how normal human beings will feel like if they receive something that they don't deserve. Right? If you pardon someone who's supposed to be executed, they're going to be thankful. And I know for sure that they're going to talk to everybody about it. You know, if they get clemency from the governor, they're going to talk to everybody about it. You know? I don't know about you, Christian. I mean, do you talk about how you got saved from hell to every single person that you see? Yeah. These criminals, they get pardoned. They tell everybody. Yeah. You do have to realize that, you know, we were once Lord's enemy. We were criminals when you think about it. We sinned against him. Yeah. 
but he cleared us up. Don't you want to tell everybody, hey, you know, it will be, um, it will be kind of interesting. You're at a bus station, and then you're talking to some stranger. Hey, you know, I was a criminal, you know. I was bound for eternal, you know, punishment. Yes. And he's like, yeah, me too, man. You know, I, I was in the joint for a little bit, you know. But, you know, and then you start the conversation. I mean, isn't that, wouldn't it be exciting, right, to tell others how you were saved from eternal lake of fire through the right faith? Amen. And having that assurance that you don't have to ever worry about burning in hell. I mean, it's a common question comes up right after, right? What about, what about Christians who commit suicide? Don't worry about them. You'll see them in heaven. Amen. Right? Yeah. But again, whatever their body does, right? I mean, there's things called judgment seat of Christ, and there's also you reap what you sow, and there's also Romans 8.13, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Law will definitely judge that person, but they're not going to be judged in hell. Right? And you could clearly see how now that fits the puzzle. Even if I commit the most Terrible sin, which you guys should never try and should never do, I'm still going to heaven. That's by grace of God. That's why it's a perfect, perfect salvation once and for all. And even more than that, you know, you and I are sealed with the Holy Spirit once and for all. So you, if you trust in Christ, you know that you have Christ in you as your Lord and Savior. Not only that, when you trust in Christ as your Lord and Savior, now you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. So it's not the way others receive Holy Ghost. I mean, that is a very critical question, important question this day and age. How did you receive Holy Ghost? You're gonna, nine out of ten, you're going to hear the wrong answer. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> you hear that a lot. I'm trying to receive the Holy Ghost. And because they heard some wrong doctrines, I'm doing my best to speaking in tongues. Some people think that speaking in tongues is the way of receiving the Holy Spirit. Right? But tongues are for a sign, and signs are for Jews. It's not for you and me. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to look at verse 12. So, the number one thing is that when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're baptized into one body. Look at verse 12. For as the body is one, so hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether it be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. When you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're baptized into the body of Christ. Think about it. You're part of the body of Christ. Amen. You'll never have to worry about burning in hell. Your body of Christ. You know? I mean, until I learned about the <clears throat> right doctrine, no one ever told me that. You know, no one ever told me about body of Christ. Yeah. And they can't even know because they're using the wrong Bible. I mean, as simple as that, <clears throat> one of the best verses that you and I could always share is 1 Timothy 3.16. Right? Let's go to 1 Timothy 3.16. All the Bible correctors changed this verse. And sometimes people will always ask this question. And I think we do need to go over it over and over. So if you're using the wrong Bible, can you get saved? Yes, you can. Because they're out of King James Bible many times. They, can, they cannot completely erase King James Bible. I mean, they do... Like NIVs of the world, there's like 36,000 differences 
but you know, message is still there. It's just that people can get saved clearly. People cannot have right doctrine. So 1 Timothy 3, 16 says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. So people's choice nowadays is NIV. This is what NIV says. Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. He appeared in a body. He. It says God. Completely destroys the deity of Jesus Christ. So if you do not have Right Bible, King James Bible, you are not going to have right faith. Simple as that. It's like you're making a cake. You need a good base, right? You need good flour. You need a good quality. But you're starting with something that's spoiled for years, thousand years. Can you imagine if you find spoiled food that's been sitting out in the sun for over Hundred years, thousand years, you know, how would it smell? How would it taste? But you and I, before we found out about King James Bible, we're fed with that. That junk. I mean, it's literally the worst for your body. That's why so many Christians are spiritually sick. But because they're feeding them with the wrong word of God. So not only that. If you don't remember many of the verses, you should always remember 1 Timothy 3.16. And let's go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. So the faith that saves you from hell, and then this word of God, you need to have the right word of God, perfect word of God, which is King James Bible. 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. I mean, this is the proof of Trinity. We believe in Trinity, right? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. But not many people really truly believe in the Trinity. They think Jesus is a smaller God. They just think Holy Spirit is another, you know, feeling, function, experience, whatever you call it. But they are three in one. They're equal. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, the Bible says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three are green one. So we clearly see the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. This is what NIV in the new version say. For there are three that testify, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. What happened to verse 7? They got rid of it. They omitted it. Why? What for? Because they don't believe it. The only reason you and I will ever change meanings of anything is because we don't believe it. You know? Like, John is smart. I don't believe it. John is less than smart, or something like that, right? You know, you just change the meaning. That's what the Bible correctors did through the devil, right? And once you realize it, when Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So if any of the Bible does not have what Christ said, then that makes Jesus Christ a liar. I mean, if you don't think that, I don't know where your brain is. Because Almighty God will preserve His Word. And if you're telling me that your faith comes from NIV, American Standard Version, New Living Translation, man, your faith is coming from something that has a lot of faults, that makes so-called your Savior a liar. Your God, a liar. Let's go to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. So some verses, you and I, as students of the Bible, we should just know. Mark 9, 44 and 46. 
Mark 9, 44 and 46. Ask someone who's using NIV to read it to you. American Standard Version, New American. Mark chapter 9, verse 44, the Bible says, Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. 44 and 46. It's gone. NIV doesn't have it. He goes from 43, goes to 45, and goes to 47. Why would they do that? Devil has his plan. Devil wants to correct it. And people goes, oh, you know, it's just a translation. It's not just a translation. It's inspired scripture, according to 2 Timothy 3.16. You know, whenever someone brings up original Greek, you got to watch out. Original Greek, original Hebrew, they haven't seen them. <laughs> I want something that I could see, which is the King James Bible. Well, how, how is original Greek going to help you right now? I mean, how is original Hebrew? How is original Chinese, Korean, Spanish, all those things going to help you? You have the perfect word of God. And this is where you and I should be forever grateful to the Lord. Yes, we have that perfect word of God. Lord, but there are many you, people who's listening, you're here because you made the right choice when the evidence was shown to you. Because, you know, it was shown to me. I rarely open the Bible, you know, but my mom, you know, got in touch with Pastor Kim. And then she goes, hey, here's King James Bible, and he has a little booklet. You know, look at it. I'm looking at it. I mean, at that time, I think I was like 18 or so. I was shocked. Man, the Bible that I've been using, it was Devil's Bible, yeah. NIV. Yeah. And all these years, I didn't even know about the perfect word of God. Uh-huh. And I wasn't even sure about my salvation at that time. And right away, let's go to the book of Acts chapter 8. That was like the first verse that I wanted to find in the NIV. X chapter 8, verse 37. X chapter 8, verse 37. And let's see, let's see. There's no way Bibles kind of have missing verses. You know, it's got to be, you know, mistake. So I went to X chapter 8, looking for verse 37. I couldn't find it. Man, I was floored. You know, I was shocked. Wow. Man, there's something going on between translations of the Bible. Verse 37. So verse 36, and so this is Philip and the eunuch, and as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? So verse 37 is very important, because if you don't have verse 37, let's go to verse 38. What does hinder me to be baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So, okay. So you just get baptized, and you get saved, huh? And then a lot of people will start using these verses. Many denominations, Presbyterian, Catholic, everybody. Why? Because they got rid of 37. What do you have to do before you get baptized? 37, and Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. There's confession of faith. Yes. You know, before you get baptized, we do confess our faith right. to everybody that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. So they get rid of it. They just say, okay, infant baptism, important. Adult baptism, important. Right? And then you're okay. You're not. Right. Baptism does not save. That's right. It's just ordinance. You know, it's a command that you obey. Confession of your testimony of your faith to the, everybody yep. and to the Lord. So if you're using this type of Bible or any wrong Bible, forget it. Your faith will not grow. You're, you'll be blinded the whole time. You know, it's like, I want to eat the best part of, say, mango, right? You have to cut it, you know, get the cover off. And then, you know, juicy mangoes are really good. 
But if you're using the wrong Bible, you can never get rid of the cover. You're literally just licking the, you know, skin the whole time. I don't know about you. I don't like licking, you know, skins of the mango, you know. But if you open it, man, it tastes really good. And as Bible believers, we get to enjoy that. Yeah, we get to really enjoy it. And because of that, you get to grow as well. That's why if you were ever looking for signs in your life, you know, you're looking for the wrong things. You know? And as I conclude, just think about what your salvation is based upon. If it's not based on the word of God, you have to recheck. That's right. And if you can't give a salvation testimony, you know, let's talk. Because it sounds like, you know, you didn't get saved through the word of God. Why should you ever hide how you got saved? Because deep inside of you, you're probably wondering, right? Again, if you saw a vision and then you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's not getting saved. Because you're trusting that vision plus accepting Christ. Many cases, if you accepted Christ and then you saw a vision, right? Or you spoke in tongues, you know, and stuff, you're still saved. Because your salvation is based upon Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God. It's just that sometimes, you know, you get snatched away. Like after, you know, visitation, you witness to somebody, they accept Christ, they get saved, and then next day, Jehovah's Witness comes, Mormons come, and then, you know, they never grow. But they're still saved because they trusted Christ. However, if your salvation is based upon your feelings, experience, you know, I was sick, but, you know, I didn't die, so Lord gave me that special grace, and then I trusted Christ. And the first thing you say when people ask about your salvation testimony, instead of saying that, you know, by trusting Christ as my Lord and Savior, you say, oh, you know, I was doing this, that, and then something special happened to me. You have to really watch yourself. That is not, that's a danger, danger zone. You trust in those and you die, don't be surprised if you wake up in hell. Right? And that's the worst, worst chance to take. When you have the perfect Word of God, King James Bible, and you can't get saved through the Word of God. I don't know if any of you are feeling that way today. Where, oh, you know, that's a great question. How did I really get saved? Was it because of feelings? Was it because of experience? Or is it because of the facts through the Word of God? If not through the Word of God, get your salvation checked and truly get saved. If you've been not hearing the Word of God as often and as, you know, often daily as you should have, then you got to start doing it. You know, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. You and I have to study. Right. If you're saved, you have to grow. You, you want to grow right in the right faith? You've got to study the Word of God. You can't stop. Just being saved alone is the greatest thing, yes, but there's something better. Living a victorious Christian life. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, there are so many false preachers out there. There's false teachings, there's devil's doctrine everywhere, devil's Bible everywhere. But you have shown us grace and mercy to find the truth. And by trusting you alone as our Lord and Savior, we're saved. Nothing. Just trusting you. Lord God, I pray that if anyone here, anyone who's listening, had any doubts about where they're going or had a different basis for their salvation based on their experience or anything else. Lord God, you said now is the day of salvation. If anyone who's listening, if you know you're a sinner on your way to hell, 
and you believe that Jesus died for your sins, shedding his precious blood, and you have repenting heart to turn from your ways and turn to the Lord. And just through the word of God, as the Bible says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth's confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you want to get saved, believing the perfect word of God, in this prayer, knowing that you're a sinner on your way to hell, having willingness to turn from your ways and turn to the Lord, believing that Jesus is God, believing that his blood can wash away your sins, and willing heart to receive him as your Lord and Savior, through this prayer, not trusting anything, just denounce all your feelings, experience, any religion that you trusted before, just denounce and renounce all of them, just trust Christ alone, and receive him as your Lord and Savior, and get saved. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. With repenting heart, the best way I know how, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart, realizing that you're a sinner on your way to hell, believing that Jesus is God, and not trusting anything else but the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ and his blood to wash your sins, then the Bible says you have eternal life. The Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I hope and pray that anyone who's listening is safe for sure and grow in the word of God now. Heavenly Father, thank you for this service. Thank you that you, know, you have saved us from hell. We don't deserve it, but by your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you bless the rest of the service today, bless the fellowship, bless the teachings, and I pray that above all, you come soon, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.